Um, hello, so my talk follows very naturally on after Kevin's talk uh, earlier on. So uh, my uh, software preservation is, a, is, a, is fun for science. Um, well, I'll start with what we're STFC, so what we do is we have big facilities that generate a lot of data. Um, and we're pretty, uh, what we do a lot of the time is store and catalogue that data and manage it for them. But we're also very interested in what they do afterwards, you know, what the scientists do afterwards. So our starting point is having a look at what uh, there's what uh, scientists do with their data after they've collected it. And they do this sort of thing, you can't read it there. They do a sort of work, you know, they do an analysis, they take their, uh, their raw data and they plug it through various software packages and they do lots of configuration and they plug in lots of parameters and if it doesn't work first time, they set, do a set of, set of parameters, you write new, derive data sets, take those data sets, go on, plug them into other bits of software. Um, and then eventually, if they all goes work right, and several months or possibly years later, they might pop out at the end with a piece of data they're willing to publish. Um, and if you actually want to um, keep a track of that, of that, all that, and, and potentially preserve it for the long term, so people can go back and reuse it, um, then you want to be able to track all those connections, and not only collect all those bits of data, but all those bits of software um, which are involved as well. Um, so. Part of our, the preservation of, uh, of, of uh, data, uh, as Kevin mentioned, is the preservation of software. Now, well, so we felt we really need to look at that area in detail. So being, uh, when we started doing this, there was actually very little work in that area at all around. Um, so being kind of good computer scientists, we felt we had to go back to those principles. And so what we did is start looking at a software preservation framework what it actually really means to preserve software in all of its great glorious um, complexity. So what we did, we came up with a very general framework which handles um, all those, the, all the issues of, of handling, um, uh, uh, preserving software, all the managing all the versions of the software, all, uh, all the different ar architectures, all the different versions, um, all the different modules involved, all the, different languages, all the vast amounts of things, that, components that are involved in it. Um, so we broke down the problem in this framework, um, which has been very useful. It gives us a vocabulary in what to talk about when we talk about preservation, um, talking about storage, talking about rebuilding, talking about um, rerunning it in, in a new situation. Um, uh, uh, so we can then uh, preserve it. And the important thing there is actually is that we preserve things with which uh, so they. We identify those properties we're really interested in preserving, and then we identify those in advance, and then we can test against them. So we don't necessarily preserve the software per se, we might just preserve that the software did this particular action. That might be all we preserve in the long run. So having got a, a framework, we well, that's all rather, rather abstract. Um, uh, so we then looked at we can, whether we can build some tools for it. So we, we started building this tool, uh, which we call Specs, uh, which uh, um, allows a user, while they're uh, building a piece of software, to start recording some of these properties, recording some properties you need for preservation while we're doing it. Um, in a bit, and we built that in with subversion, so you can do it while you're doing a software engineering process, um, hopefully a good one. Um, I idealised because we agree, but you know, we, we felt that was a, a useful starting point. Uh, our next starting point then would be to build that into software repositories, because we realised that you know, it's, you're going to deal with a lot of legacy software, so you maybe don't want to build this into your software repository catalog rather than your uh, uh, software development. So the ultimate, uh, so, and we're now pursuing that in a new project, which we've got called PAN data, uh, which is total and neutron data um, analysis, actually a, a soft project for that called PANSOFT, uh, photon and neutron software, where we're hoping to build a, a software catalog, um, a software repository of photon and neutron data. So um, the, the final message, I guess, is that we should we do want to preserve software, it's, it's absolutely right until we can validate the results in the future, we can reconstruct and replay um, uh, what people have done in the past, check their results, make sure they're correct, um, and then also to reuse that data. I mean, it's no point, data itself is, is a fairly you know, a very passive object, we need something that we can actually process it with, and that means we need to preserve data to handle the software to handle it. Now, it might be preserved in all different ways, in the language is functionality, but we do need a method to preserve it. Okay, thank you. Thank you.